the Lord has made, we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. At this time, we will have our opening selection by the Cherry Chapel Church Choir.
Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen thee. Mm -hmm. Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. Mm -hmm. Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. Mm -hmm. And he sent it and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look on. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Mm -hmm. I read from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 6 through 12. God's word for God's people. Yeah. Let's pray. Turn Father, 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 in the master's name of Jesus, and we thank you, God, for this day. Thank, thank you, Heavenly Father, for yet another opportunity. Yeah. Oh, Master, 
we send praises unto you for the work that you have allowed Pastor Howard and his lovely wife to do here at Ebenezer. We ask a continual blessing Bless upon him in the ministry that you have set forth at this branch of Zion. But now, Father, we've had songs, Father. We've had prayers. we had scripture. But now, Master, it's preaching time. Preaching. As I stand behind this sacred desk, allow these people to see none of me but all of thee. Spirit of a living God, fall fresh in this place. Yes. Holy Spirit, preach to me. Preach through me that the word of God will go forth. If some sin is sick, sinner may say, what must I be, do to be saved? Yes. We love you, Lord. We honor you and we praise you. Heavenly Father, anything that's coming up against this word, we denounce and we send it back to the pits of hell. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of God. Dr. Howell, I'm not going to be with you long, but I just want to encourage you just for a little while. All right. Just for a little while. We thank God for your pastor and aid committee and whomever it was that called me. We just want to deal with your theme, approved by God. Amen. Approved by God. Yes. Approved by God. If I were to define approved, it means to regard faith, favorably or to consent to as defined by the American Heritage Dictionary. If something is approved by God, this would mean that God has consented to it. Mm -hmm. This takes me back to the book of Jeremiah. In chapter 3, where Jeremiah says in verse 14, Turn, O backsliding children, said the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And, I will, and when you get yourselves in a repentant state, when you turn from your wicked ways, when you ask God for forgiveness for your sin, when you realize that you're in a fallen state, and you realize that the God that you serve wants what's best for you, then I will give you pastors after my own heart. I'm talking about pastors that are approved by God. I'm talking about pastors according to my heart that will love you. Pastors that will feed you. Pastors that will preach the unadulterated word. Pastors that will provide you with understanding of the word of God. Pastors that will teach you how to rightly divide the word of truth. Pastors that will not allow the sheep to be fleeced because it will warn them about the enemy. I'm talking about a pastor that's approved by God. That will show his heart like God. That will provide you with care. In other words, he will encourage you to cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. He will have a concern for you and tell you to pray, church, without ceasing. The pastor approved by God will have compassion Yes. Upon the people of God. Yes. Because Lamentation says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Yes. Because his compassions yes. fail not. Yes. Ebenezer, it's good to have a pastor approved by God. Amen. You see, Pastor Howard, I'm glad you're an awesome man of God, approved by God yes. to preach the word of God. Yes. You see, Howard, it's good to have your beautiful yes. wife approval yes. and blessing. It's good to get approval. From your children. Yeah. Who are going to love daddy and pray for him anyway. Yeah. Regardless. However. It's good to get approval from the church family. Yeah. We love to hear you expound yeah. on the word of God. It's good to have the fellow preachers approve. As you minister mightily. To the men of God. Yeah. And on the move for God. Yeah. But it's even better. Uh -huh. To be approved by an almighty God. Yeah. 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 You see Pastor Howard. I received a, a text from Paul's spiritual son Timothy. And it was just for you, Pastor Howell. He said, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus. In other words, you need to know every word that comes out of your mouth is washed by an almighty, all-seeing God. He says, Howell, preach the word. He said, Howell, don't preach your testimony. Howell, preach the word. Howell, don't preach your child. Howell, preach the word. Don't preach the travesty. Howell, preach the word. Don't preach the troubles that are around. Howell, preach the word. Don't preach the tradition of the Baptist church. Howell, preach the word. Because the word keeps people from defecting from the truth. Preach the word in times of convenience. Preach the word even in times of inconvenience. Yeah. Preach the word when people have a desire to hear and preach the word 
Whenever they want to be elsewhere watching the ACC tournament, yeah. preach the word no matter what goes on. Yes, sir. Preach you even when they don't show you that they love you. Yeah. Now, you have to convince by means of the Holy Spirit the things that are right. Yes, sir. You have to rebuke the falsehood that is not right. Yes. The man serving approved by God will encourage sinners to repent, yes. believe, and accept God's only begotten sin. But he almost must exhort believers to continue the race that we have chosen to run. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see, Paul gives two reasons, two reasons that he wants the one approved of God to follow these instructions. All right. You see, first of all, the time is here, church, that people do not want to hear the word of God. The word of God is spoken in truth. People turn deaf ear to God's divine word. Yes, sir. The second reason is that Paul is just about, his life is just about over, and he is giving instruction to people like you, Howard. You see, Howard, people don't want to hear the truth. People right. don't want you to preach against sin. Yeah. Let's be yeah. real. Yeah. We as a people, we like name it, claim it, right. and a prosperity yeah. ministry. Yeah. Don't tell me the wages of yeah. sin right. is death. Right. Don't tell me that a liar will not tarry in the kingdom. Yeah. Don't tell me that whosoever denied the son, yeah. the same had not the father. Uh -huh. Don't tell me that he that is if God heareth God's word, or therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. Yeah. But not the highway. Watch as well as pray, my brother. Be serious in your work for the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Evangelize the people. Endure the afflictions that are upon you. Yeah. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, yeah. but God will deliver you out of each and every yeah. one of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's a free Prove that you are the man of God, called by God and approved by God. Yeah. Now, if we were to expound Ebenezer on your signature verse coming from 1 Thessalonians, it says, But as we are allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God which tries our hearts. Yeah. Well. This verse, this verse means that to Paul, whomever, whomever, whatever ministry that you were called into, the word of God, you were a steward that was approved by God. Yeah. And the word was a precious treasure. A treasure that God had trusted you with. Yeah. His response was to please God by faithfully and truly heralding the word of God to people. Yes, yeah, sir. It does not matter what man thinks about it. Because you have to please God yeah. and not man. Yeah. Yeah. We know it's God. It's God's church that tests our very hearts. Yeah. And he gives us rewards accordingly. You see, stewards are required to please the one who pays him. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes a preacher might not tell the full truth. Go ahead. Or water down the word. Yeah. So that the money won't stop. Bring back. But God. Yeah. And if God has approved of you, he knows whether or not your message has been watered down or not. All right. All right. So preach the word. Yes, sir. Yeah. Church, as we go. As we go into 1 Samuel, to help us better understand 1 Samuel chapter 16, let's go back to chapter 15, where Saul has been approved by God. All right. But Saul had a very, very bad habit, yeah. which was, he would say one thing, but he would turn around and do something else. Y'all yeah. oh, right. know what I'm talking yeah. about. Y'all yeah. know how people of God are. Y'all know some of the things that we do. Yeah. Well, but anyway... So Saul, Saul had this thing. He would always try to wiggle his way out of his sins. And every time he did something wrong, it was always right. somebody else's fault. I don't know people like that. Well, as chapter 15 opens, tell Saul that the Lord has given me a task. This is Samuel talking. And he says, Howard, since you are a man approved by God, Listen carefully to what I'm about to say. The Lord of hosts says, I remember what Amalek did, how he waited for Israel, and he waited to attack them as they made their trek from Egypt. You see, church, the Amalekites came from Esau, Jacob's brother. They were an enemy to the Jewish people 
who defeated them shortly after Israel left Egypt yeah. because of a meek man by the name of Moses, yeah. who was a prayer warrior. Uh -huh. Joshua's army began to prevail. Yeah. After that time, the Lord declared and he re repeated war against Amalek. Yeah. Well, Samuel tells Saul to go demolish the nation, wipe it out. Everything in it, every man, every woman, every boy, every child, oxen, everything. Don't leave anything for these people. So they went and they waged war. And their disobedience was not against them, but it was against Almighty God. Yeah. In Genesis 12, God tells the people, he said, I will bless them that bless you. And I will curse them that curse you. The Amalekites were trying to stop God's plan for the entire world. Well, we must realize. That there is no between, dearly beloved. You are either for God or you are against Him. So the man approved of God. He had 200,000 footmen, 10,000 in Judah. So he came into one of the cities of Amalek and he waited. He tells the Canaanites, he said to go, because if you are in this land, I will have to destroy you also. Mm -hmm. Well, the Canaanites departed. Saul smote the Amalekites all the way to Shur. Uh -huh. Bible said that he took old King Agar, uh -huh. the king of the Amalekites alive, yes, sir. but destroyed all the people with the sword. Church, the first point that I want to make, if you are going to be approved of God, you will not be disobedient to God when he tells you what to do. Yeah. Saul decided Go ahead. to do this thing his way. Yeah. He spared a God. He kept the best of the sheep. He kept the best of the oxen. And he kept the best of the lamb. He kept yeah. everything that he felt was good. Yeah. Dearly beloved, all of us as born again believers are approved of God. <laughs> but we must realize that things have to be done according to God's will. Yeah. God's way yeah. and according to the good word of God. Yeah. So Samuel says from the word of the Lord that it repented him that he even hired set Saul to be king yeah. because he did not do Boy. as he was asked. Yes, Samuel, Samuel wept bitterly for Saul. Now and now he comes to Saul and he tells him that he has a blessing for Samuel. And he has done the commandments of the Lord. Yeah. Saul lied to himself and he <laughs> lied to Samuel. <laughs> the second point I want to make yes, is did. that God does not want you to blame others for your mischief. Yeah. Verse 15. He blames the people, but God put him in charge and gave him specific direction. Yeah. Samuel tells Saul, I will tell you what the Lord is saying. When you were young, you were approved by God as the king of Israel. Did not God send you on a journey and said, totally bring destruction upon this nation of Amalekites. Saul, you have willfully been disobedient to the Lord. You kept the best of the spoil. Mm -hmm. You did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yeah. Saul lied for the second time. Uh -huh. He also blamed his army again. Uh -huh. Dr. Howard. And he even used a lame excuse that the animals were for the Lord. Yeah. Church, no matter what ministry we are in, we are all approved by God in it. But dearly beloved, we must realize that God does not want dead sacrifices. He wants living obedience from your heart. Yeah. God does not need donation from us. But he does desire a contrite heart. Yes, sir. You see, if we sacrifice without obedience, we are nothing but hypocrites. Amen. The man, the mighty prophet Hosea says in chapter 6, For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, <laughs> and the knowledge of God more than burnt offering. Yeah. Prophet Samuel went on to tell Saul that your rebellion, your stubbornness, Controlled by his heart. Yeah. And those shares showed that he had rejected God's divine word. Mm -hmm. To know God's will and to deliberately disobey it is to put ourselves above God mm -hmm. and become our very own little G-O-D. Right. So I'm saying, <laughs> I sin because I fear the people. Yeah. Third point I want to make, Pastor Howard. 
those that are approved God by God must fear the one doing the approving who is God himself. Yes, so now, now gives a pitiful plea for repentance. Everyone knows it's not real. And Samuel refuses to worship with him. And Samuel turns away. Samuel tore the skirt of his mouth. Uh -huh. And Samuel used it to tell Saul that God has torn the kingdom from Saul's head. Yes. And will give it to a neighbor, a neighbor, yes. that will do exactly what he said. Oh, yes. uh, uh, Saul. And then long at this time, King Agag comes on over. And he begins to mourn over, Samuel mourns over Saul's disobedience. Mm -hmm. Well, in chapter 16, the Lord asks Samuel, Samuel, how long, how long will you mourn over Saul? All right. He said, you must realize that he was the people's choice. Uh -huh. And he was approved by me. Uh, yeah. But I need you. Fill your horn with oil. Yeah. Go to Jesse, the Bethlehemite's house. Yeah. There you will find God's choice. Yeah. Well, One of the young men yeah. that's approved by God. Yeah. Yeah. Samuel said, how can I go? Because if I go and Saul gets wind of it, he's going to kill me. Yeah. Well, so God always has a plan yeah. for his people yeah. to keep them out of harm's way. Uh -huh. He says, go. Say you are to sacrifice a heifer to the Lord. Uh -huh. Invite Jesse and his sons. Yes. And do just like I said, Saul. But follow my instructions. Yes. Don't be like Saul. Yes. So Samuel is obedient to the Lord. Yes. But as he comes, the elders get a little afraid. Uh -huh. They want to know, yes. what are you coming from? Yes. Yes. Are you uh -huh. coming peaceful? Uh -huh. He says... Come on. He says, I come in peace. Mm -hmm. And I come to sacrifice a heifer. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine that while they invited Jesse and his sons, they were wondering why they were there. Nobody, Pastor Howard, knew. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> but Samuel yeah. himself. Yeah. And as the young men came, and he looked at them, well, we know what type of men Samuel like. He liked men that were of big stature. Yeah. He liked men that were good looking. Yeah. Men with a lot of physical prowess. Yeah. Church, the young men came in one by one. Uh -huh. And Samuel said, I know the Lord's anointing is on him. Uh -huh. But the Lord spoke to Samuel and he says, you need not to operate on your physical sight. All right. yeah. Because All right. I have refused yeah. him. Yeah. He may be approved, but he's not approved by God. Yeah. You see, Samuel, you see the physical strength. Samuel, you see the physical power. Samuel, you see his domineering stature. You see his height. You see his incredible good looks. Yeah. But I'm Howard looking at his heart. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesse calls a better dad who was approved but not by God. Yeah. Shabbat parades true. Yeah. And he's approved also. But not by God. Uh -huh. The process goes on. Yeah. Until Samuel says. Do you have any more mm -hmm. children? It's a shame. That Jesse saw his youngest son. As being so insignificant. Yeah. That he wasn't even invited yeah. to the feast. Preach, Be careful. What you look over. Yeah. Because it just might be approved by God. Yeah. Samuel says, Go, get the lad. Yes, we will not go anywhere yes, until he comes. Uh -huh. yes. David Church was ready. Yes. In other words, he looked blooming. Uh -huh. He yes. looked healthy. Yes. He looked fresh. Yes. Beautiful countenance. Right. And the Lord said, Arise. This is the one. Right. Samuel, yes. he is approved. By God. Well, so David was anointed and approved by God. Yeah. Spirit of the Lord came yeah. upon him from that day. Yes. You see, Ebenezer, 
God has given you a servant yes. that's approved by God. Yes. Now I'm going to tell you a few things right now. Go ahead. They may sound a little funny to you, but listen intently to what I say. You see, about 10 years ago, Minister Tomato came, well, spoke with well, sheer elegance well, like Apollo, but he wasn't approved by God. Well, Bishop Beat came through with more degrees than a human heart day in July, yes. but he was not approved by God. Go ahead, Apostle Apple yes. came through, prophesied to the yes. entire congregation, yes. but he was not approved by God.
And we want you to know that we love you and we thank you for your service and your work. But if you see, look up on that banner, see you're not up there by yourself, right? That's right. Okay. <laughs> Just want to be sure. All right. Well, they threw me up there. Uh oh. So, all right. I hear you. That's all, but I, I, I understand. I hear you. Okay. <laughs> but we want you to know that we do love you and we thank you for all that you do. And we want to thank Sister Howard also because we know that she does love working with those youth. And we thank you for all you do. Pastor, don't try to compare bags because you know big things come in little packages, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the trustees have a presentation. Pastor, this fell on me. And uh, I know it ain't been all sunshine and there's been some rain. But from the trustees, they want me to give this to you. So we had to vote who did want to give and who did not, didn't want to. But then by me not wanting to, I got to give it anyway because I want to put it in my pocket. Been the day that now I donated to you. Thank you for the night. You were here to be around. given the opportunity to say something. I know he wants to say something. Amen. <laughs> so we're going to leave the floor open for him at this time. And following him will be Mother Gertrude Buller. Amen. Take responsibility. I don't try to hide under the cover 
of uh, some excuse, but if it's my fault, it's my fault. And I, I want to say this to, to all of you. Uh, may God continue to bless you from the depths of, of my heart. I thank you so much for coming and sharing this. And now, if you want to make me mad, <laughs> leave here without sharing some bread with me in the back. <laughs> Some of y'all want to get up and just run on. But that's all right if you want to go eat somewhere else. Can I recommend somewhere else? Mm -hmm. Y'all want to listen to me? Mm -hmm. Fellowship Hall. <laughs> oh, there it goes again. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm, 
I almost forgot my children. <laughs> they told me the other day, you forgot us. <laughs> so, so I had to get up and thank them too. And uh, won't they beautiful coming down there? Look like a dog, baby. <laughs> Their, their participation. They are our church for tomorrow. Amen. And Liz has trained them. Amen. So we just thank and praise God for their presence. At this time, uh, Reverend Bynum is going to come with his final remarks and give us our benediction. Turn the microphone. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. We do it a while. <laughs> we do thank God. We thank God for this opportunity. We pray. If we've said something to encourage you, Pastor Howard, as you continue your tenure here, um, knowing that you said you love Ebenezer, could be approved by God if you did. Amen. Because it's a church that sits off 301, called the Church Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, and I love you here. Amen. And every member of that. Amen. God bless you, Sister Howard. You all continue on. And I allow God to continue to use you yes. in the endeavors that he has for you here at Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church. Thank God for all the, the preachers. I thank God for Minister Mix and Minister Lies out there and our very fine deacons. And I almost forgot our ushers. Thank God for you. I love you. Amen. I love you, Church Chapel. Thank you so much. Y'all ready to go? And Reverend Wiley, I am a former son. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let us stand.